DJ Double J, part-time disc jockey, full-time television sales operative, also known as Mean Mr. Crumple, also known as Betty. That's her real name. Her goal is to save John F. Kennedy. Having unraveled the conspiracy and with strong public support, the NTTA, that's the National Time Travel Administration, undertook the first major historical rewrite preventing the Kennedy assassination. But although the second term JFK did avert the Vietnam War, without the martyrdom factor, there came a third major change. The first man on the moon was a cosmonaut. So, she has to make it be like that. Let's see how she's doing so far. Um, John F. Kennedy has not been shot anymore. She saved him. Uh, I think she flipped that several times. The cosmonaut's yet to orbit the moon, however. If she can get that, she's got the timeline how she needs it. She has two upgrade parts, and that's where she's at right now. Uh, we're going to start a turn with a very scant draft. This is all we have in here. Pretty soon, especially since... Um, well, I guess we have some people in the far future, so these cards are going to be taken. Pretty soon these cards will be all gone, though, and then our characters are going to have to start forgetting. We only have two more cards left in our patch deck. As such, a lot of people have been doing uh, engaged in the conspiracy research ac action, which we didn't see much of uh, during the first portion of the game. Uh, people were more content to just see what was in the deck. Now that the deck's depleted and they know that... Uh, they don't. Ha there's nothing for them there. They are checking out other people. So if the, if they do find that someone else has a card they need, what can they do? Well, I'm all for games where people openly are able to trade things. I think there's nothing wrong with that. So they can do that. Um, also, they can just try and attack someone, and if they succeed in their attack, rather than uh, dismant disable an upgrade, they can take a card. Um, yeah. So that's how it works, and that's how it works. Uh, what else did people do? Um, Desi, he cashed in on some money. He sold an antique in the far future, and then went back to the time machine uh, mechanic. Unfortunately, the time machine mechanic is going to be moving, so Desi's going to have to move again. He he had already used his action, so he wasn't able to cash in on, um, not cash in, he wasn't able to uh, spend the time that's necessary to get the time machine mechanic to uh, fix up his... his um, disabled upgrade here. It's time to move our mechanic. Here we go. 11. That We've gotten a lot of 11s with moving him. One, two, three. Oh yeah, he skips over these. Okay, one, two. Well, he's going to go right to none then. You don't even have to count it out. Sorry. Desi is a carpenter who loves the ladies. He's also a, a lady, Eleanor Case wife. He's also a man or a I think a lady named Renee, uh, who, well, it does. It, this is a little bit of uh, prose, I think. Uh, two, uh, two eleven a.m., April fifteenth, nineteen twelve. The time traveler stood on the tilting deck of the Titanic. At last, we know what really happened this night. She said quietly. Oh, sorry, I didn't say that quietly. They should say that. They say it quietly before uh, the quote, so you know how to read it. At last we know what really happened this night, she said quietly, while waiting for the automatic return cycle to engage. But the accounts were wrong. The great ship sank nine minutes early, 200 years in the future. The Titanic, the Titanic claims an extra victim. So I guess she's supposed to die um, in the Titanic, uh, I guess. So that's kind of depressing. That's a, so he's working to die in the past. Maybe I'm misunderstanding it. Anyway, he's got to get 1929 patched with the Titanic exploding, and the he wants Berlin to host the World's Fair. Let's see how that's looking for him. Uh, 48. That's that is paradox. So he just needs to get the patch there. 29. Is, 29. Nothing's happened yet. That's when the stock stock market crashed. Um, so. He has all the upgrades he needs, and I think this turn he can probably get to the time mechanic. It's not that far away. And it's happened. We're going to have to forget. No one was able to, to draft a card that turn, so I have to go through, and everyone has to discard a card uh, back into this pool so that we can continue doing drafts. TD just got Skywater's Birch Bark Canoe. Uh, that should help him by adding one to his movement. That'll be a useful item for TD to have. Skywater's Birch Bark Canoe. Um, what else happened? There was some more conspiracy research done. She looked at TD's cards, actually. And um, I think 
Desi, Desi got, oh, Desi got his, is all fitted up. Uh, he, he had a lot of fun with that mechanic and got his space helmet fixed. Um, Oblio, Oblio, I don't know if you noticed, Oblio only has one card here, which is rough, especially since he started, he had two, but then he forgot one of them. Uh, so he did some conspiracy research as well. Um, I don't think anything came of that. And then, um... DJ Double J, she did a little tap dance. She went over here. I think she. Oh, she did a. She did um, a hypothesizing. She actually went back to the deck, uh, t took a card, went here, um, and patched this paradox here to get another turn. Uh, but then she only rolled a one, so she ended up back at the Waco standoff and went back to this deck again. Unfortunately, the time mechanic is going to be stable. We're not going to get to move them this turn. In this life, Oblio is a photographer for Life magazine. He takes pictures of concerts and sporting events and that sort of thing. And just, you know, people's lives. Um, in another life, he was Dr. Fudge McDonald back in uh, the 70s. And also, really, he's Gunter. It's not a watch, it's a Time X. Time dash X, it's a little joke. In my universe, Archduke Ferdinand survived. World War I never happened. Instead, Europe enjoyed a time of tremendous prosperity. In 1932, Einstein Industries Research Division began experimenting with time travel, and by 1996, anyone wealthy could buy a wristwatch sized time machine. As far as I know, mine is the only one still in existence. So what I wonder is why other people from his universe like it seems like if a whole universe was able to get um watch time time things and i guess not everyone can afford a watch in our world but it's still fairly common that uh, not anymore in the age of the cellular phone i guess but a lot of people could afford a watch if they really wanted one um so i would think that this the whole deck of ids would be people from gunther's universe right because they could they would all want to be restoring their um, time machines, but I guess it's just Gunter in this case. Ah, so what are what are his um, what are what are his outlooks? 1917, 1918. Well, 1918 is paradox. 1917 is not. 1950 is in, intact though, so that's good for him. I doubt he has the patch cards he needs. It's possible, but he only has two, and so the chances are that he doesn't. Um, he has his time machine in place though, so if he can find the people and use his Miller's grappling hook to take the cards he needs, he could he could be winning the game pretty quickly here. DJ Double J just got super lucky. She got Foglio's racing dirigible. She just happened upon it in 1981. Um, just for the record, I, I had completely forgotten it was there. She was just moving back in time, thought she would um, pick up a card, see if it was a chassis or a weapon when she needed. What's so good about that is the eight matches the eight of her chassis. So that gives, that's a, there's some synergistic effect there that gives her a bonus uh, six power. So basically that cancels out the power there. So this isn't going to give any extra power for anything else, but it's going to give six more to add to the five that's inherent in the time machine that she can use for other things. So she can afford a weapon up to six. Uh, which is fairly decent. And so she's going to get a little bit more bang for her buck. Six more bang for her buck than all the other players just because of that synergy between chassis and power plant. And a turn. Things are heating up. Uh, both the these two gentlemen here, Desi and Oblio, are heading to the future. Uh, both for the same reason. They both want to check out what... Um, what DJ Double J has in her hand. They've checked the people behind them in the past and have not found what they're looking for, so they're thinking they have it. Um, though that's not entirely true. I don't think Desi actually checked Oblio, uh, because Oblio had two cards, so he didn't think it was... I mean, it is an action. and You, you can only check people behind you in time. What else happened? Um, none. She got her, her weapon. She ended. She picked up this flathead pipe claw hammer axe. And this flathead pipe claw hammer axe has just finished off her time machine. So if she can get the time uh, the time stream to look how she wants and get back and get the patent, she's got a victory. Um, she's got a little bit better chance than the other people who have the, the, the cards they like. Except for, I guess, Desi. He's got his time machine done and he's got a few more patch cards. So he seems like he's in a good position too. Uh, but Oblio, you know, we've talked about that. Um, 
TD, he also got something. He got Grossberg's narrow fire wagon. He got rid of his canoe in favor of that. That's going to give him a little bit less flexibility in terms of finding a weapon, but he's going to be able to move much faster, which is especially useful to him because he only has this one buck. That he's been he's actually spent it and regained it several times. He's just been slowly making his way back to the pass for quite some time there. So there he is, he's waving. All right, so now let's move the time mechanic and we'll go on to another turn. It's really getting exciting. Two, he only moves two. One, two. Raid on Pearl Harbor, called off by Tokyo. And we're gonna have another round of forgetfulness. That's gonna be particularly rough on Oblio. Nun is a full-time graduate student, I'm assuming in the performance arts. I really don't know for sure, however, because she did not say. Um, but she is, she's studying hard, working hard, and when she's not doing that, she's also Pansy Decker Holland in another life, uh, who could be a graduate student of the future. Um, 2020, that's not so long from now, but it's further away from when uh, Nun was in school. That's 30 years from her. Uh, this filming was filmed in 2012, so that's only eight years from now. Not so much in the future, uh, but it, really, she's Sharon. Um, and Sharon, says the name's the thing. The Declaration of Independence, what's that? You mean the appeal to world opinion? Yes, that document was as important as the articles as amended. Huh? Oh yeah, in this reality, it's called the Constitution and Bill of Rights. You know, I realize these documents are functionally equivalent, but I'd rather they have correct titles. So she's really just trying to change names back um, to how she, she feels more comfortable. And that requires her to go way back in time. Luckily, she's heading back there now, and she does have her Bowker's tandem bicycle to get her back there quickly. Um, so she's got a she's got a far past goal, which is different from everyone else, I think, that we've seen so far. Everyone else is kind of in the early to mid 20th century. The three that have been revealed. She's actually going to be in the early American chrononauts portion, right back there. There's been a lot of like uh, chronological cloak and dagger type of stuff. Start out with DJ Double J going back in time. She was, she did not like the fellows converging on her. She went back, checked out this item, did not like it. They unfortunately chased after her. Um, first, after Desi looked at her cards, he found that she had some one of the cards he needed. Um, not the other though. The other one's still out there somewhere. Uh, so he went back, but unfortunately he he'd already checked out her cards, so he wasn't able to make the attack. After that, Oblio uh, did the same thing, except he checked out Desi's cards and found both of the cards he was after. So he's heading that way. Um, he wasn't quite able to make it there. And then Nun, she was right here. She did this weird kind of, she went backwards in time and then jumped over the paradox into the Manhattan Project, checked these cards, did not find what she was after. Um, meanwhile, TD, uh, he in the past found the last item he needed to complete his time machine. He has the steely, in quotes, brand draw knife. And now he has a complete time machine and is ready. Um, quick note about TD, he, due to his Grossberg's narrow fire wagon, he rolls two dice which, to move, which is the exact same number that the time machine mechanic rolls. So let's roll the time machine mechanic right now. He got a seven. He's gonna move backwards in time seven spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 1916, the year the Star Bank Spangled Banner became our national anthem. Part-time bird watcher, full-time teacher, I'm gonna guess. Do you think high school? Maybe. I don't know. I could see him doing high school. Uh, he kind of looks like a high school teacher, but I could see him doing elementary school as well. Um, I think since he says he's a teacher, he's definitely not a um, college teacher. Um, in his heart, though, he's Alexander Shen, man of the future. And what a well-dressed man he is. But secretly, he's Werner, or Werner. Uh, he would Mona Lisa switcheroo part one. So there's another part to this, um, probably in another card somewhere. A few years before Werner's time machine became operational, the Mona Lisa disappeared and was never recovered. So Werner's first trip into the past involved replacing Leonardo's original work with a replica and bringing 
back the original, but the art experts denounced it as a fake. The canvas was too new, the paint too fresh. Wah, wah, wah. One of the dangers of time travel. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Chrononauts game, um, there is a series of items in the standard game that involve the Mona Lisa, so I wonder if that doesn't also tie in with that. So he would like to... I don't really understand how this this doesn't seem to really have to do with this at all um, but oh well let's take a look how td's doing or Werner with his his uh, he's already got this patch down and he was the one who put that there 1974 where is that at oh yeah nixon resigns that has not happened yet um lincoln needs to be shot before or no he needs to not be shot before that can happen so, oh, he's going back in time. Maybe he can prevent that. DJ Double J, although she was not able to take it, saw in here a card she needs. The 1969 Cosmonauts Orbit the Moon card. Someone must have had it and then discarded it. And in fact, I think she knew who had it. Um, I had it marked that she knew where her cards were. I just don't remember who had it. It was, I think, either Nun or TD. So DJ Double J went back to the future. Desi followed her. He's about to attack with his Benson's long shot revolver. Uh, that's a fairly good shot of either way. He's going to use uh, the chunky one will be DJ Double J's defense. She rolls 1d6 plus 5. And he gets, oh, she gets to counterattack whether or not he misses. Um, and he gets 2d6 plus 1. So 9 plus 1 is 10. 6 plus 5 is 11. So she defended it. I, I'm not sure if anything happens if you successfully defend. I think you might just lose an action. But she gets to strike back anyway with a 2d6. He gets a 1d6 plus 2. She got a 6. He got a 3. So she gets to disable something from him. Um, I think she'll probably... She gets rid of his power plant. I mean, that's that messes you up the most, right? Disable that. That's going to disable this, and then those the weapon and the thing are still okay. And this is really, really funny, um, but uh, because they keep going, running, and chasing each other back and forth in time, it's a classic comedic chase scene. Uh, but Oblio was not able to reach Desi. Because if you recall, Desi's chasing DJ Double J. DJ Double J is chasing after her dreams, and Oblio's chasing Desi. But uh, Oblio has a... a weaker chassis than the other two, Desi or DJ Double J. So he wasn't able to catch up. He is able, however, to use Miller's grappling crank. He would like to take a shot at DJ Double J's Sumatran coffee. So he's going to roll a die. If he gets a five or a six, he gets to steal it, which is pretty good. He got a two. He does not, he's not able to steal it. And the turn ends with the prevention of Lincoln's assassination. That flipped um, the resignation of Richard Nixon to a paradox in the future. Nunn is also heading back to the past. Now we might see that she has an advantage just because of her secret ID. Um, it's in the past, so if she can write this and then just get to the patent office, no one can stop her. And since the patent office is in the past, that might be a weakness in the combination of these two games. She's going to have maybe an unfair advantage. But maybe not. I mean, other people could see that happening. Why? What's she doing in the past? Why are they in the past? That's a little fishy. What are you doing in the past there? Um, let's roll to move the time mechanic. He used to move a full eight spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Manhattan Project sabotaged. And that's going to have to do it for now for the um, for this episode of the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Things are getting really close to being finished. It feels like um, this is this is going to be the time when I think the personalities of those involved are really going to come out because they're going to have some tough decisions to make in terms of whether or not to pursue their own goals or whether or not to stop those who are very close to being successful. If one person uh, stops chasing their dreams in order to halt, halt another one's progress, they might just find themselves um, sacrificing their own wishes so that someone else can then trample over their um, struggling bodies in order to grab the golden apple. And that, that could be what happens. Um, it looks like Nunn has a pretty good shot at it right now. And TD is not the type, I have to say, to really go out of his way to stop someone else. He's very he's a nurturing individual. 
Especially if someone's not messing with him, which none really isn't. She's just kind of going back there in time. However, there's, you know, some people do have some money and the resources to, to move, move through time pretty quickly. So someone could jump back there and stop her if they want. Uh, however, the other three who are not TD are involved in their own little tussle. So we'll have to see next time in the second leg of the Zytal leg of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, the first United States of American Chrononaut.